few people have asked me how I'd be creating this click to toggle they're like touchscreen friendly nav systems or drop down menus so if you go to webintersect.com and you click the navigator button you'll see that navigation menu slides down into view all nice and animated and then to get that to go away you can scroll and everything but to get that to go away you actually have to click to toggle the menu system closed again and I made the little arrow go up and down on the button you see see how the little arrow flips up and down according to which position the menu is in it's gonna have a little up beep beep and then it comes down and this here is the standalone version that you're going to get as source code that you can tweak so I have my logo here I have a nice top bar that has a gradient set on it and then we have a button sitting here and when the user clicks that button you'll notice that a menu slides down and then the little tick arrow changed its position from down to up now when I click it again the little arrow will change its position once again to the default position and it just slides open and close like that and they can the user can hit it really fast if they need to like that or if they want to if they want to be annoying and it still won't mess up the functionality and you can put whatever you want in there so be creative you can put images new containers in there you can float some divs side by side right next to each other whatever you want to do so I'm just going to explain the code very quickly and then give you the code and you guys can tweak it to make the menus more unique and make them your own and I just wanted to show this picture of me because a lot of people online yell at me for never updating my profile picture so here's an updated profile picture of me the reason why I'm building click to toggle style menus is because users on mobile devices and touch screens really don't get a hover or mouse over event that we developers can target and most CSS and JavaScript drop down menus in the past are programmed using mouse over and mouse out events which are just not available to a touch screen user so we have to consider that some people might be coming to our websites using a touch screen device or a touchscreen computer. Now a touchscreen technology can trigger a hover event if the user holds their finger down in one place long enough on the screen but I think it's best to directly target the click event which is the moment the exact moment that the user's fat finger presses the screen and there's also touch start and touch end events that you can investigate for people on mobile devices or touchscreens that are in that little family of events that you can target especially for touch screens but if you use the click event like I'm gonna use here that's the same thing as touch start pretty much it just doesn't give you the coordinates on the screen of where the user clicked unless you program that in basically all I'm saying is the click event is good to use for people on a PC with a mouse or for people with a big fat finger on a touch screen and you'll have a more intuitive and consistent menu system for all of your users so if a user goes to your system on a touch screen it'll be the same exact thing as if they go to it on their PC alright first we have a top bar div and that top bar div let me open this in Chrome Let's shrink that a little bit so that's the top bar div is that gray bar with a gradient on it at the very top now this div ID logo right here that you see with the word logo in it is where your company logo would go in the top bar and then you have div ID of sections button holder and that is the div that's holding this button and it only really needs to be as wide as that button is and then inside we have the actual button which you can style that button to look at like anything you want I didn't do any styling to that button now also inside of the button in the inner HTML of that button we have a span with an ID of nav arrow and that's how it's getting the arrow to go up and down and change because basically it changes the inner HTML to a different arrow according to what position that menu is in if it's up or down so we change that little tick arrow to go up and down according to what position the menu is in and we target that with JavaScript now the very last thing is we have the sections panel and that's the actual panel the div that holds the black area here of the hidden little panel that comes sliding out. 
So that's the containing element. It's called sections panel. Then inside of that we have a div and that is the div that you see here in light gray that the words are inside of. So we have that div and then words inside of it. And you can target all of these things with CSS which I'm already targeting them with CSS in the application so you won't have much trouble with finding where to style things and stuff like that. Okay so all of the HTML I'm going to collapse back up. Now we'll open up the style element and we'll look over the CSS. Let me get that window back up here and what you see is we have the body margin zero pixels so there's no space on the edge of our page and the background is set to a light gray color that's this color here you see down in the body now the top bar has a background gradient color a linear gradient and then we give that bar a height of 60 and you can see its height is around 60 pixels now the top bar logo I'm floating left that way this div that holds the logo can sit right next to the navigator button holder div you'll see both of those divs are set to float see the sections button holder and the logo div are both set to float left so they can sit horizontally on the page right next to each other and I give the sections button holder div a padding top of 16 just to bring it off the top here of the uh, top bar and if you wanted to target that button to style it in CSS, you would just put another rule right under here that would be targeting the button inside of that. And let's see if we put a background color. Background color is bright orange. And then let's refresh the page. Now you see I have a bright orange background there. So that's how you can target that button. You can also give that button an ID if you want and target the actual ID of that button down here. Okay, then we have the uh, CSS for the sections panel itself. Remember the sections panel is this black container that has these rounded edges on the bottom here. And I'm getting those rounded edges by using border radius, 0 pixels, 0 pixels, 8 pixels, 8 pixels. So we have 0 pixels here, 0 pixels there, 8 pixels here. 8 pixels here roundness and we have to make sure we position it absolute that way we can put it exactly where we want it so you can target after you position it absolute you can target the top and the left properties so I put it 60 pixels off the top so the menu seems to slide out from under the uh, top bar we're starting with a height of 0 pixels that way you cannot see that element and it's really sitting right there but it has a height of zero pixels and when you hit that button JavaScript is causing some CSS3 to run to affect the height property and animate it to make it look like it's opening up and then it just reverses the height to close it up back to zero so that's why you see it says height zero pixels that way by default you just can't see it so it has a width of 550 and you can easily see that the background color is black and it's set off the top 60 pixels and it's set off the left edge 160 pixels so that way it opens up like right under that button then I set the overflow to hidden just in case you put a whole bunch of stuff in there and it pours out of that container you don't want it showing outside of that so that's why overflow is hidden and Z index is set to 10,000 just to make sure that this uh, sections panel that slides open will be above any kind of content that you have on the page that might have a higher Z index and if you have anything on the page that might be going above your menu or your menu might be sliding under that content you can just give that content a lesser Z index value and just make sure that your sections panel has a higher Z index value than any other element on the page and that, that way it'll assure that this little slidey menu comes out on top of all the other content that's down in your page now this last little bit is very important because the transition property affects the height of the element in JavaScript in a moment what we're doing is affecting the height property of this sections panel so when I tell JavaScript to change the height of this sections panel it's already going to be animated and I don't have to do anything in JavaScript because I put this one line in place I will have I will have no JavaScript based animation going on in this application it's all CSS3 because CSS3 can handle these simple transitions 
and we can target any property we want so I'm running the transition effect over the height property and it takes 0.3 seconds for the animation to occur in a linear fashion and there's zero seconds delay now here we have the styling it's just the simple styling that is for this light gray div that sits it's a child div that sits inside of your section panel that slides down so that's the light gray div that you see inside of the sections panel you can style it any way you want okay now let me collapse the CSS back up and we'll now discuss the JavaScript which is where the toggle magic takes place so when we click that button let's look in our HTML you see this button in this on click event we have toggle nav panel function running and we're sending it the ID of the element that we want to toggle in this case it's our sections panel div sitting right here so when the user clicks that button toggle nav panel function executes and it takes in the argument of which element that we want to adjust the height of So what we do in the first line is we make some variables for our little script here first variable is called panel and that's going to represent the object reference for the element on the page which is our sections panel we made nav arrow target the document get element by ID nav arrow on the page that's in the button that way we can easily change the inner HTML to make that arrow tick up or down then we have a max height property and I have that set to 300 pixels that's the amount that your menu will slide open mine only slides open 300 pixels let me show you so this height this maximum height where it stops is 300 pixels if I was to make this number let me change that 100 pixels you'll see that there's a big difference when I refresh it only opens 100 pixels you see so I'll leave that in 300 you can put that number anything you want now the logic we have here is saying that if the window is fully opened at its max height then we're going to close it by making the style property set to zero pixels and remember in our CSS we already put the transition property into that sections panel div in the CSS so anytime you affect that height property of that div it's going to be in an animated transition fashion so that's how the animation takes place even though you see no animation taking place here in the JavaScript it's because it's programmed into the CSS so that's why you see zero references to any kind of animation here in the JavaScript but yet we still get nice animations alright so if the panels height is equal to the max height which is 300 pixels in my case then I make the panels height equal to zero that animates it at that point closed it closes the menu in an animated fashion and I make sure that I change the nav arrows that inner HTML back down to a downward facing arrow that's what this HTML is for it gives you a downward facing arrow and if the height happens to be closed and they click the toggle button then we're going to make the panels height property equal to 300 pixels that way it animates open 300 pixels and then we change the little nav arrow dot inner HTML to an upward facing arrow and basically that's all the logic in the JavaScript so now you have JavaScript HTML and CSS that makes the whole little application run and you can tweak the crap out of it you can really customize the way it looks the way it runs the way it's animated and all kind of stuff this is Adam Corey January 10 2014